uh, everyone kind of has their own idea of what inquiry is. So I think getting us all on the same page is probably beneficial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially nice. within a grade level. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice to talk to other teachers and see what they do to say, well, what are you doing compared to, to them? What can you improve on? What can you try? Because as you say, you don't really know until you try something and then you don't want to use it again or not, but you have to take the risk of trying. Yes. And then if it doesn't work, well, you know that doesn't work. So you move on to something else that does. And sometimes that risk is so hard to take yeah, <laughs> in, in our sometimes. profession, yeah. for sure. <laughs> and even I'm thinking across Ontario, if we had, and we do have some stored, but accessible materials that we draw from, just to see someone else inquire and process. And I think that's the intent of the videos, to build a visual representation of what might it look like in your room. You mm -hmm. won't do it the same way, but you might take that's an right. idea that he has, and, and that might be a jump-off point for you. if we're talking about challenges and advantages one of the biggest challenges that I would that I have seen or do foresee especially within social studies um, for a lot of these kids because it's so difficult to get people interested in history a lot of the times without having that big hook you know what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, the site Canadian Mysteries is fantastic mm -hmm. um, in terms of finding um, primary resources. So there's a lot of articles written from that specific mm -hmm. time. There's a lot of pictures um, as well as uh, it's not just primary, there's also secondary. Um, so I, I, I use that for the Who Discovered Klondike Gold and the students had to use both resources. They had to compare what they both said and then sort of analyze, you know, what's the difference between these primary resources versus the secondary resources and then how does how does this, the story sort of unfold when you look at both and then use your sort of analysis and critical thinking skills and you tell me what you, who you think um, deserves the title of the discoverer of the Klondike Gold. So that's okay. one way that I used it in the social okay. science. When you talk about Canada being like, oh, there's not a lot of blood, there's a lot of stuff that we did not do oh, well. Yeah. Um, some 100%. of our typical history perspective or how we're presenting it in our books is like, we're missing a lot of perspectives. So you know what I've found, Brian, it's really been helpful. It's the kind of questions you pose to them as well, and that you deliberately and purposefully bring in examples of other perspectives, or you 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 actually present something where it it, it there is a lot of controversy. And For also sure. I found linking it to things that are happening now, and then that just just gets them going, and then they they come up with something, and then they take it back to wanting to understand something more uh, or understand a perspective. So if you have an artifact in front of them, they can physically touch it, pick it up, sure. mm -hmm. look at it. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say that, I'd say at least three quarters of them learn significantly more than really? if you just say, here, search it online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's not enough for them. They need both. Dissect a frog in person, dissect a frog on an iPad. Mm -hmm. right? Like, right, yeah, right. I, I want to cut that sucker. Yes. I, like, I want to, you know, Flip I made a mistake. Down, yeah. Look yeah. at it, you know what I mean? Like, touch it. Yeah. What does it feel like? What does it smell like? I mean, those yeah. those experiences are amazing, especially in the field trips, right? Which, if we, we could do field, field trips without worrying, worrying about money. <laughs> oh, all the amazing things that so, social studies could be, because there's so much out there. I mean, yeah. we could take yes. a trip up to Ottawa. There's so, so many museums. <laughs> if we could, for example, rent out, artifacts and bring them into the classroom and be able to have them you know see it and actually well hold it I think yeah. that would would connect stronger that's a good point whether it's politically correct to say it or not the grade 8 history is not the most exciting <laughs> part of history <laughs> but, but in general pieces, so there's though. parts that they can like get their curiosity as opposed to this is what you got to learn. Yeah, right. I can I can agree to that too. Like I think that confederation can be a little bit dry, <laughs> but there are some elements to it that can be made a little bit more interesting. Like looking at we looked at the Klondike Gold Rush yep. and we did it as uh, like an inquiry sort of thing who discovered the Klondike Gold Rush. So they had to look at a bunch of primary and secondary resources and then compare the difference between them. So they got a, a good chance to sort of um, like look at it from an inquiry perspective and determine um, who discovered the gold. Yeah, and the gold rush piece is always, I mean, it's relevant on TV now, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's the most fascinating piece. Yeah, they always yeah. fly. Um, 
got a big Q chart on my blackboard. We always ask questions and spend a period answering all of them at the end of the week or something. And uh, I think after the history one, if I remember correctly, it was all Gold Rush questions. Mm. Every single one of them was about Billy Barker this and how much gold and this. Like, it was <laughs> every single piece was gold. So, yeah, the, I mean, pulling that. But that's them telling you what's exciting, right? Mm -hmm, like, yes. as opposed to... Do they join or do they not join? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's. And I think your point's well taken. But it's how do you um, create that environment that supports curiosity? And I've actually seen it working with some topics that. Well, and actually, I mean, I'm learning along with them. So, um, so it's all part of it's about how I think just um, how how you present it and when you introduce the opportunity to formulate a question and support them around coming up with something that is of interest to them. Yep. So um, just in a couple of examples in, in the <coughs> last month or two where we've really been working it through, <coughs> we found um, there's certain things you can do that can really help to facilitate that. But it, 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 has, it's, it, you have to, it has to be somewhat planned. That's the thing I'm realizing is inquiry is a journey of curiosity, but as like in the teacher librarian role and supporting teachers through it, to be very thoughtful about how you present it and then and make sure that you know it does engage right but once they get going and they've got the context it's actually really quite amazing the things they come up with